We're going to look at section 5 of chapter 7, which is using the Pythagorean theorem. So please write down everything that you see on the screen for this first page. Remember, if I go too fast, you can pause me. If I go too slow, which I don't think I will, um, you can fast forward me, but I don't recommend that. And if you have questions along the way, pause the video, write yourself a note on the side, and we can go over that tomorrow during class. So we've already learned the Pythagorean theorem, which we know Pythagorean theorem is only for right triangles. So remember right triangles, if I draw this, I know this is a right triangle because it can make a 90 degree um, in the corner. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So the converse, or the opposite, is true. If I find something that the length of a squared plus the length of b squared does equal the length of c squared, then I have a right triangle. So during this section, you can use calculators because we're looking at the concept now, not so much the math. So I'm going to take you through some examples, and then you're going to try a couple on your own. So here we have two examples. We have example A and example B. And you're going to tell me whether each triangle is a right triangle. So take a minute, copy down both triangles, but leave plenty of room to write down your answers. And then I've written down the formula, the Pythagorean theorem, theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'm going to show you how to use that to find out if these are right triangles. So in our first example, example A, we know that this is our right triangle. So we know that's a leg and that's a leg, so we know that 9 squared plus 40 squared, we're going to see if that equals our hypotenuse, C, which is 41 squared. Okay, so 9 squared is 81. 40 squared is 1,600. And 41 squared is 1,681. So we're going to see if these two are equal. And yes, they are. Therefore, this is a right triangle. Now, example B, gosh, I'm not sure if it's a right triangle, so I would assume that this would be the right triangle if it is one. So we have A squared, 18 squared, plus B squared, which was 12 squared. We're going to see if that equals 24 squared. So 18 squared, and that's why you can use your calculators, is 324. 12 squared, I should know, that's 144. 24 squared equals 576. So let's see, if I add 324 and 144, I get 468. And that does not equal 576, meaning this is not a right triangle. So you're using the Pythagorean theorem to see if a squared plus b squared does equal c squared. And if it does, you have a right triangle. And if it doesn't, you have no right triangle. So now you're going to try a couple on your own. So here are two examples. So you're going to write this down in your notebook, just like we have been. But you should see a text box to your right where you're going to write down some answers. And if you remember, in our Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, um, we decided earlier that the longest length will be, c, will be c, or the hypotenuse, and then these two can be a and b. So I want you to figure that out then for number two, so you figure out which should be c, and then find out, does a squared plus b squared equal c squared? And if it does, say um, yes, right triangle, and not say no, not a right triangle. So now we're going to try something um, in addition to what we've already learned. We're still kind of looking at the Pythagorean theorem. So I am going to, though, on any test or quiz, I'm going to give you this formula. So this is the formula down on the bottom. So if you're given the distance formula, can you find the distance between any two points? So they show you this diagram. So I want to find the red distance between my two points. So here's my one point. Here's my other point. And as I did before when we were calculating slope, I actually put the a1, a, x1, y1, x2, y2. 
so that I keep myself organized. So copy this down, especially the formula, and in the next slide I'll show you how to use that formula. Okay, so here's our first example. We want to find the distance between two points. So here are the two points. So it says find the distance between this point and this point. And I am just going to label them so that I don't make a mistake. And I'm going to label this x1, this y1, therefore this would be x2, and this will be y2, so that I remember what I'm doing and don't make any mistakes. Okay, so now I'm going to use the formula. <clears throat> so d equals the square root. So I'm going to ignore that for now. So my x2 is negative 4. And my x1 is 1. So I have negative 4 minus that squared. And I'm going to use a different color for y just to help us see it. So I'm going to say my y2 is negative 2. And y1 is 5. And I still want to square those. So let's start um, at the beginning and let's start to clean up our equation here. So let's simplify it. So d still equals the square root of, so negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5, but I'm going to square that in a second, plus, let's clean up the other one, negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7, and I'm going to square that in a second. Okay, so let's go back and let's look at this again. So d equals the square root of negative 25, negative 5 squared is 25, and 7 squared is 49, and negative times a negative makes it a positive, so I get 49. Now I'm going to add those two numbers together, so d equals the square root, and 25 plus 49 should equal 64, so I know the square root of 64 equals 8. And it can't be a negative because I can't have a negative distance. So the distance is 8. Okay, so I'm going to have you try these on your own. So remember the formula that we're using. Distance equals um, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So you're going to use that formula, and you're going to solve these three equations. And again, I would just start to label them so that I don't make a mistake. So there's x1, there's y1, there's x2, and y2. Whoops, forgot a little parenthesis there. So go ahead and try those. Once you have the distance, go ahead and write that on the text box on the right. Remember, if you can't Remember what to do or you're a little confused, you can watch the video again and you can also look in your textbook. So if you go to your textbook, they have some exact similar um, problems for you to look at and you can follow along on how they did it, which is pretty much the same way I did it, but it might help you to see it again. So if you go to page 321 in your textbook, you can see another example to help your understanding. So just try these. Again, don't stress out if you can't get it because we're going to work on it in class tomorrow. Okay, this is the last slide. So this is just kind of a review or a recap of 7.5. So remember, we were using the Pythagorean theorem. So if you look at the lengths of the three sides of your triangle, if the a squared plus the b squared equals c squared, remember, c has to be the longest. If that does work out, then you do have a right triangle. How about I try to spell correctly? Um, and then the other thing is if I give you the distance formula, can you use it to find the distance between two points? So we will see you tomorrow to go over some of your questions.